Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Phillips, and as Humara mentioned, I work on the inclusive design team at Microsoft. I graduated two years ago with my master's in computer science. So what is inclusive design? Inclusive design is a new way that we're building products at Microsoft. It brings the best of human-centered design and design thinking with a little bit of magic, and it has three steps. The first is we start by recognizing who is excluded from our product or service. And by doing this, it forces us to realize that each of us have our own past experiences and biases that we build into our products. Building those biases in excludes people who think, act, or behave differently than we do. The second step is we go out into the world and we learn from these people. We learn about their hobbies, their lives, their families, what their lazy habit is. Because by learning about so many different aspects of their lives, we can often uncover unique insights about how they solve problems. And this is super important, because at our core, humans are tool builders. And the best person to solve a problem is the person who's facing it. So the final step is to work with this person to build a new solution that overcomes the exclusion that they originally faced. And oftentimes, a solution designed for a person with a disability actually generates a better solution for everyone. And it goes a little something like this. If you design a solution for a person with a permanent disability, suppose one arm, that also helps people with a temporary or a situational disability, a person with a broken arm or a new parent carrying their baby. But I want to stop because I bet no one in this room thought about a new parent carrying their baby as a person with a disability. But the World Health Organization defines a disability as any mismatch between a person and their environment. Ever had trouble getting a jar of pickles open? Ever had trouble ordering food in a foreign country? Ever forgotten a complex set of directions when you're driving? Then you have experienced a mismatch with your environment, or you felt the feeling of being disabled. Now, I understand this might feel a bit crazy. So to put it in context, I want to give you one example from my work at Microsoft. Recently, we worked with the OneNote team to better understand how students were using OneNote in the classroom. We began by looking at who was experiencing these mismatches and came across something a little bit interesting. Students with dyslexia and dysgraphia were struggling when taking notes with the pen. So we wondered why. We went out and talked with as many people as possible, from neurologists to parents, teachers, and most importantly, students. And we found one unique thing. Students loved taking notes with a keyboard and mouse. We wondered why. So our aha moment came when we were talking with a young fourth grade boy who said that when he was using a keyboard and mouse, he could use spell check to go back and fix the words that were spelt wrong later. But when he was using a pen on his surface, he never knew what words were spelt wrong. And so he always stopped to struggle to spell that word correctly the first time. This momentary pause often caused him to lose his train of thought in the story he was telling or the notes that he was taking. From this moment on, we strove to create a perfect solution for this young boy, and actually we'll be shipping spell check in ink in the spring. This feature not only helps this young boy, but will help hundreds of millions of students around the world create better stories and tell it more effectively. All of us have faced exclusion at some point in our life, and it's the most shitty feeling in the world. So as designers, creators, and makers, it's our job to build products and solutions that remove these exclusions rather than introduce more. So today, when you're working with your teams, I challenge you, stop, take a moment, and ask your team, who are we excluding with this work? Thank you.